Hi, welcome to the Cult TV Sofa. This is a reaction video of the 12th episode of Season 2 of Babylon 5 called Acts of Sacrifice. You can now see the full reaction for this YouTube video on my new Patreon channel, along with lots of other goodies. Uh, links are in the description below. Last time we saw a mysterious ship attacking different species ships and taking prisoners. Delenn was called before the Grey Council to account for her recent physical changes. The captain went out in a star fury to investigate the attacks, but found more than he was expecting when he was taken by the ship himself. He found himself being pitted against other species that were being controlled by the aliens. After defeating a Drazi and a Narn, he realised that they were being tested to see how they all performed and fought. Delenn was removed from the Grey Council, but was able to remain on Babylon 5. The captain's old ship, the Agamemnon, mounted a rescue mission to save him, along with some friends, just as he was uh, able to escape from the, uh, sorry, with the Narn into an escape capsule. Returning to the station, the captain had a secret visit from General Haig, where it was revealed that the captain was checking out the command staff on the station to see where their loyalties lay. Sheridan then brought in Franklin, Garibaldi and Ivanova to tell them that he was working to find out what corruption was occurring in the EarthGov, and he wanted their help. So let's see what happens in this episode. I'm going to put any relevant trivia that I find over here and at the end of the reaction I'll be discussing what happened and my thoughts about it and I'm going to start it in three, two, one. Nance and Centauri fight him. Nan Cruiser, big one. Do we have enough power to jump? Only if we go right now. I'm picking up a distress signal. It's Big one of engines. the evacuation transports. It didn't make it out, did the rest? Truck, how many? 700 of our females and children. You can't go. Oh my god, they're attacking what? An unarmed transport? With the jump point open as long as you can. Women and children. And put us between the civilians and the war cruiser. Changing course. They have to. That's interesting, though. They said keep the jump gate open as long as possible. I always thought that they, as they sort of were flying, they opened the jump gate in front of them, um, and it kind of was open as they went through, and it closed behind them, and it was kind of all generated by the ship um, from the front. But actually, that jump gate opened as it was kind of turning, and they've now gone away... Um, they veered away from it, and it's still open, and they're leaving the jump gate open. Uh, not jump gate, sorry, jump point. Um, they're leaving that, that open. Um, I wonder if it's taking, if it draws energy, them keeping it open, or is it just the initial opening it that takes the energy, if that makes sense. So, I know it was a bit rambling, it was just interesting to see how the jump systems all work and all the sort of little details. I, I just find that interesting. Big ship to be able to, to put in front of uh, something like that. It's definitely able to put protection. So they're a long way from the, the jump point. Transport away. She's safe. And this, it's still open. Yeah, they're not. Suicide mission. As soon as he heard that the, uh, as soon as he was told that the ship was under fire, and he gave the order to put themselves in the middle uh, to protect that ship, he knew. And I think they, the other bridge crew knew as well because her voice did change. It kind of dipped, say when she said, "Changing course." That's uh, honourable, but horrible as well. He accuses the Narns of deliberately placing military targets within the civilian population in order to use their own people as shields. He also said the escaping transport contained weapons, not refugees. That's a lie! How can either side prove it? It's... Uh, I don't know how they can prove who's right and who's wrong. 
Uh... Everyone in this room knows too well that the first casualty of war is always the truth. Unfortunately, the rest tend to be too small or too weak to defend themselves. Why is the doctor there? Why would the doctor be there for that kind of discussion? I can't think of any reason. It's not. There's no medical issues at all. Um, they're not even talking about taking refugees somewhere to give them medical assistance. There's no tie to him whatsoever. And, to be honest, even Garibaldi, to a certain extent, don't know why he would be there. He's station security. This isn't a station security issue, really. Uh, the only way it could be is because there are Narns and Centauri on the station, so obviously there could be flare-ins up of, of violence. But... What Jakar is talking about is a senior officer level discussion. I don't think Garibaldi would even be there for that. They might brief him afterwards to say they might be a flare up, but uh, that seems a bit weird. I can't promise anything, but I'll talk to my government. That's all I ask. If Earth takes a stand, the rest will follow. I know they will. They're not going to take a stand, though. I guess the diplomatic office back home was right for a change. The Mamadi looked like a pretty advanced civilization. With the war heating up, we need to get more races on board. Either as allies or in the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. So that kind of implies that the League of Non-Aligned Worlds aren't allies. He literally separated them. He said either as allies or in the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. So say that's two different things. I would have thought the League of Non... Well, I thought... <coughs> Excuse me. That the League of Non-Aligned Worlds were just a collection of smaller races. They might have just have one, maybe you know, a couple of planets um, that they've colonised or that they're on. So they've come together to give uh, um, a bigger voice rather than individually. Whereas the Minbari, Earth, um, and they're on lots of different planets that are much bigger than bigger races basically um, and they have more say more might than the other races but yeah that seems a bit of a weird not a good mentality to have to think of them as two separate things because they are still your allies do whatever you have to just get them to sign on no pressure Look a bit organic. There is no excuse, political or military, for the deliberate killing of civilians. Well, then your people will come in on our side. Oh, she hasn't got the say she had before. But you said many times that you would never rest until the Centauri had been utterly destroyed. So do we help you now? Knowing that in a few years, when your force is at full strength, the Centauri will ask us for help against you. When everything else had been taken from us, Hatred kept us alive. And now it may destroy you. Not just him, though. It says all the women and children, and well, all the innocent people um, who have been slaughtered. I mean, yes, she is right about what she said about Jakar. But, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> he's just one person. Um, I know that other nuns have the same feeling, but. I'm sure there are others who just try to get on with their lives, and now they're being slaughtered. So what, do you just take that stand that you're not going to help because of what the man said and get them all wiped out? Genocide? That's not right either. But say, she's not got the political strength now to do anything at all, I don't think. <laughs> to the return of glory! Uh, so this is where Garibaldi would be informed. You two, come on, move, move, go on. Can you watch it? Why did he go like that? That implies that they're going to do something. The servitor beside me is my translator, Doc. I speak through him. Are you incapable of speech? <laughs> no, of oh. course not. But it would represent a loss of face for me to communicate with an inferior race. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, they're a species with big egos. So they think they're superior to everyone. So 
they don't even speak to people they have i see what they would classify as a lower being um who telepathically uh, speaks for him so he doesn't dirty his voice by speaking out loud to lesser beings uh, that's quite cool like this way <laughs> she's gonna struggle with this <laughs> your opinions carry much weight mm. back home ambassador his reputation's growing I wanted respect instead I have turned into a wishing well with legs <laughs> that's good analogy the mighty Narn, eh? Yeah, it's four against two. Back off. Put it down. I said put it down! Oh. Forced his hand. It's dead. He didn't have a choice. He had just been attacked by the Centauri. He had the yeah. right to defend himself. He does have. He did have a right to defend himself, but security had arrived. They dispersed everyone, and they'd apprehended the ringleader. So it was no longer self-defense at that stage. Things were under control. He was then, and uh, uh, not completely wrong, but he in initiated the attack again. I mean, it was four against two, but it was over. And security, he he was acting in self-defense as well at that stage. It's a horrible situation for everyone, but yeah. Both your people need to back off. Babylon Five is neutral territory, and I will not have you turn it into a war zone. Are you saying that you can't control your own people? They're all individuals. Next stop is the infirmary, which is down the hall to the right. Follow my assistant. I'll be with you momentarily. It's always weird when you get large groups of extras like that um, who don't say a word. They all just nod and, you know, as in real life they'd be chatting and saying thank you very much or something. And I think the reason they don't speak is because if they say a single word, that becomes a speaking role. And I think they have to get paid a lot more money. So <laughs> they're just background extras at this stage. But I always find it always looks weird and out of place when that happens. <laughs> weak die and the strong survive by preserving the sick and wounded of other races you pollute the genetic pool interesting perspective you know i think we should all be moving on <laughs> i don't believe that any form of sentient life is inferior to any other thank you for the stimulating conversation doctor you have some strange notions <laughs> i'm sure they will pass with time <laughs> well i think reality proves how ridiculous a uh, perspective that is to have though you think about all the inferior people out in the world who have given so much to humanity i mean the person who comes to mind immediately and i know he he didn't initially have well stephen hawking um he he didn't and he wasn't initially ill he became ill over time um but think about you know, what they would have done if when he became ill and the amount of knowledge that we would have lost um, if if he hadn't survived and progressed to where he was um, and the career that he had. So yeah, it's, it is a, not a good uh, thing to think, basically. Yeah, I got your strange notions right here. <laughs> For once, I agree with him. <laughs> I'm sure it'll wear off. <laughs> Cut. My usual. Coming up. I thought I saw her um, in the background of the bar earlier. So yeah, Cat, the bartender. She's popped up in a few episodes. She seems to be like the consistent background bartender uh, in in the um, well. Um, I wasn't even in this bar. That's three different bars. Um, she's been in now. I reckon there's probably like a franchise and her or family or something own uh, the franchise and so she moves around where required. Something for you. You want to tell me what this is? 
<laughs> oh, please relax. It's not a bribe. Oh, Over the years, like when my luck at the gaming tables has been less than salutary, you have always come to my rescue. And now I repay you in full. That's not good that he helped him. And it's also not good that he's now repaid him. Because it, it kind of looks like he... If Garibaldi was help if he did help him out when um he was losing the gambling, he was kind of assisting I don't know. This financially that just looks really dodgy in his in their positions for him to do that. And it does look like he's now being given a bribe, so that looks even dodgier. Ugh, that whole situation seems very weird. Um if I was his senior officer, Garibaldi's senior officer, and knew about this, I would not be happy and I'd be having some strong words with him about it. Shouldn't have done that. Get your receipt. I want to make sure everything's on no, the other I don't want a receipt. Then what do you want? I want you to stay! What are you talking about? I would never threaten you or the others. Maybe. Not directly. Your actions have started a war that could threaten everyone. You always listen to me. And I look around for someone to share my good fortune with. There is no one. Repercussions of your actions. If you're still here, if I've got the time, I'll have that uh, chemically inoffensive drink. There's no guarantees. None required. That was my good friend, Mr. Garibaldi. Yeah, that's her. It's good to have friends, is it not? He's feeling very alone. We are not. We never needed allies before. But you do now. Your message is heard. And understood, Is Chikar. it? Might have been heard. Don't think it's understood. Now we send a message of our own. Uh. Uh. So that's the Centauri who started the fight. We attack in six hours. A mass attack of all Centauri. Oh, red blood. Not sure we've seen the colour of blood from species, but... Oh... He was waiting for Garibaldi. But obviously the murder happened, and that's taken up his time, and he's either forgotten or he's just too busy and distracted dealing with that. And if you're really convinced that I'm only showing you the good parts of Babylon 5, well then go ahead and choose any part of the station at random and I'll take you there. Agreed. Wonder who's psychic? Is the the uh, one who's not speaking sending telepathically to the other guy? Is the other guy reading the uh, the silent one? Or are they both psychic and they're both talking to each other? Telepathic is what I'm psychic. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. Would you consider telepathy a weakness or a strength? If it's a strength, it's probably the the silent one who has it. If it's a weakness, then it's probably the uh, the other guy. Um, yeah, don't know. But we simply can't give the Narn government any kind of official help. I feel for them as much as you do. Yeah, they can't take. Well, I'm not saying they can't take sides. I'm saying Earth are saying they can't take sides. Even offering that kind of assistance would be negative towards the Centauri. And from what I remember, the Centauri are the kind of the the oldest ally of Earth. They introduced them to the jump gate technology and everything, so they go back a long way. They're not gonna want to upset them. Especially when they're at war and uh out for blood with a big army. Ambassador Jakar, I'm afraid they didn't listen to you. A group of extremists are planning to attack the Centauri here. Shrock! Are they armed? A few guns, mostly Drazi knives, long ones with poison tips. <gasps> poison tips. I mean, that's definitely out for blood. They're not even just, you know, even if they can stab someone and kill them, good. But they might, if, they, if they wound them, they got poison tips, so they're going to kill them eventually. So, yeah, this is a, they're after a slaughter. <laughs> They've rejected my authority. I have to reclaim it. You don't mean you're going to. Well, I have no choice. Then I'm coming with you. I don't think that would be you wise. You will need someone to watch your back. If it's not me, who would you prefer? She's not as good as the Toth as the uh, original actress. She's not as 
doesn't come across as strong or as confident. Alliances, Alliances are oh. built upon more than tactical advantages. They are built upon similarities of culture. You're worthy now. We will go now and discuss the terms of our alliance. Uh, thank you, but I, this is not... I... Oh, hell. Well, mission accomplished. <laughs> are you challenging me? You've already made the challenge! Yeah. The question is, do you have the courage to back it up? I love the way the light then, there's like the bar of light going across his eyes to really draw out the red and the sort of the anger in his face. That was well shot. <laughs> yeah, they have that way of fighting with their hands. Oh, well, that's cheating. He's got a blade. Not very honourable. <laughs> She's got. She has got his back, at least. Enough! This ends now. Oh. We mustn't let them see weakness. Walk beside me, Nato. Get to the med bay, though, quick. The only one who showed weakness there was the guy Jakar was fighting. He pulled out a blade when they were fighting hand to hand, and then he stabbed him in the back. Talk to Dr. Franklin. He thinks we can get medical aid to the Narns, earmarked for their civilian population. So now, I could see why Dr. Franklin would be brought in, but not before. But from time to time, he's been able to get other people out of sticky situations. But you realize this violates your government's recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> they said they can't give official help. He's, yeah, he's going against Earth, but that's not good. I mean, that would be a serious breach of everything. Um, pot, I was going to say maybe even treason? Because he, well, his actions could actually instigate a war with the Centauri. But I don't think treason's the right word, but I, I don't know what that would be, but... Um, it would certainly be a serious charge. Um, and it's one thing for Dr. Franklin to be able to smuggle people off Earth. He has medical contacts there. If I remember rightly, they were, you, it was doctors who were doing the smuggling. So yeah, he has that contact. He has no such no such contact or anything on Narn or anywhere to, to, or Narn planets to do the same thing. So that seems very unlikely. That they're two completely different things to try and smuggle people off Earth than off Narn or other Narn planets. That's odd. It turns out that we have more food coming into Babylon 5 than ever gets used. We could transfer some of that food to Mimbari transports. They could deliver it to safe zones in the Narn colonies. Okay, that's a big thing to ask, and it is kind of showing the Mimbari help in the Narn, so I'm a bit annoyed what he said though I know it's for the right reasons that they have more food coming into Babylon 5 than is being used, so he's then going to chuck it over to the Narns cause, you know, the refugees what about the people down below they seem to be struggling for food and to eat why aren't they giving it to them that seems a bit not good so, you said that there were just a few details to work out prior to closing this deal? Then we will conclude this deal in our traditional manner. We will have sex. Very sorry, we really have to take care of this. Um, maybe we could just put a pin in this right now and, and um, <laughs> I can get back to you in a little bit and then we can um, finalize. Good job, was Garibaldi doing the negotiating? Well, you could put a bag over his head and do it for Babylon 5. <laughs> oh, God, that's... Trust him to come up with that. I've decided I'm going to give him exactly what he wants. Leftover food and medical supplies. Cargo holds to smuggle out a few here. Not what he wanted. There. It's the best we can do, Ambassador. And I can't tell anyone about it. Can't use this as leverage no. on the others. He wanted more. And I thank you on behalf of the many Narns whose lives this will save. <laughs> to conclude our deal, we will have sex human style. Kiss, 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 grab! 
How do you like it so far? Oh, I... <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes! Oh. Can you imagine filming this scene for them? Yes! 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 I love what she's having. Perhaps I'll call you before I go. <laughs> Those. <laughs> and he appreciates it. Basically, yeah, the race had no idea how humans have sex, so she could do whatever she wanted uh, and just say it was sex. And she did. Let's <laughs> uh, hope they'll find out in the future, though. That could backfire. I would expect nothing less than the deportation of the nun in question. His personal effects will be confiscated, auctioned, and the proceeds donated to the Centauri War Fund. That good day to the both of you. Very formal. The head Lumani left this for you before he took off. Well, isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. What is it? What to say? Next time, my way. <laughs> Not sure I'll be touching that with my hands. Is it too late? Thanks. For what you did. The nuns are falling before us. Soon they will have all the trouble they could wish for. That's not the right thing to say. And if it makes your life a little easier in this difficult time, it is a happy coincidence. That is. It is good to have friends, is it not, Mr. Garibaldi? Even if maybe only for a little while. It was probably the best he could do in the situation. He could have done a lot worse. Ah, uh, good episode. Uh, it's hard to see what's happening to the Narn. Uh, I mean, it looks like the Centauri are just wiping them out. Um, I, I don't know how... I'm pretty sure I remember that the... Centauri fleet is substantially bigger than the Narn, so I don't know how they're gonna they can survive. It seems weird that Sheridan is trying to do everything he can to help. I know that sounds bad, but he's basically had. I'm sure he'd have had orders that he can't interfere. He can't do anything. Earth are taking the stands a, a neutral stance, so he, by doing what he's doing, that's although morally right, it's but wrong, bad. Um, and if found out, he's a representative of EarthGov. It could draw Earth into the war, and that's really not good. And as I say, I know it's a hard position. Like he made the argument himself, Babylon Five is meant to be a place of it's meant to be neutral territory, and that's not what he's made it. He's now they're helping the Narn, so it even goes against what he said. It was well acted by um, and Andreas uh, Katsoulis. Not sure if I pronounced his name right. You saw all the emotions you saw in him in this episode. Um, yeah, very well done. Yeah, so things are starting to kick off a bit now. Um, what are we on episode 12? Only halfway through the season, or just over halfway. So still a lot more to go. So yeah, let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. And I shall see you for the next one. Be seeing you.